Okay, we're live again. So let me send the, the teachers again, just to make sure they have it. All right, we have questions, by the way. All right. Okay, you can go ahead with the questions, Ms. Donovan. So one of the questions was, how did you learn how to play cello? Like, wh what caused that to be an interest of you? How old were you? Mm -hmm. How did you get to be the musician and composer that you are? Ah, okay. Well, let's do that here. Oh, and that was easier. Kamira Sarver, a fifth grader. Kamira. Okay. Well, um. In one way, it's not a particularly exciting story. And then in another way, maybe it, it is. Um, there's a program. I'm from Washington, DC. Uh, I was born in the 70s. So I'm t I turned 46 last year. And uh, for the last 50 years or so, there's been a program called the Washington, the DC Youth Orchestra. And uh, it's a great program where you can learn to play any instrument in the orchestra pretty much for free or little to no money. Um, and you can start. Uh, as a beginner, and they have room for you to go all the way up to an advanced. Many people go on to have careers in music as a result. My mom played in that orchestra when she was a kid, and she wanted me to play in that orchestra. Um, but I didn't know what I was going to play. And what was interesting is that I didn't really have to choose because there was only one class. There were two classes with the space, um, the cellos and the violas. Uh, the violins were full. I am um, at six years old when I started playing. I didn't actually I didn't have my two front teeth. I was kind of a late bloomer when it came to that. So I couldn't play a woodwind instrument. I couldn't play the flute or the clarinet or the saxophone. And you also can't play a brass instrument if you don't have your two front teeth. So I couldn't play trumpet or trombone or tuba. And I was really kind of small anyway, so tuba wouldn't have worked. Um, so my mother wouldn't let me play percussion because she thought she would go crazy. And I was too small really for the bass. So the only two options were the cello and the viola, and my mother played the viola when she was a little girl. So she said, why don't you try something different? And so I did, and that was the cello. And that was 40 years ago. Uh, and I'm really glad that the cello chose me um, because I think right now, there are lots of cellists who are just figuring out all of these really wonderfully cool things that you can do with the instrument that they weren't doing just 10 years ago. And some of the other instruments in the orchestra are not as uh, unexplored as the cello. So I'm excited to be a pioneer on this instrument and to discover things with looping and with percussion and with playing in different genres um, that some of the other instruments aren't necessarily doing as much. So that's the story. Um, been playing for a long time, on and off. Some, most, some, a lot of that time professionally. Sometimes, I, you know, I was an English teacher, or I was doing something else. I think a follow-up to that question might be: How did you learn, or what made you become interested in becoming a looper? So you learn to play the cello, and then there's this whole other talent set that you have in being able to create a multi-instrument piece of music just by yourself. So maybe talk about that for us. Well, you know, I um, I think the, the looping kind of happened to some degree by accident. Um, I, I was exposed to looping in three ways. One, uh, the first person was this woman named uh, Zoe Keating, and she's a cellist. Uh, and she loops, and she does a very high, high uh, technical quality looping that involves computers. Um, and her music is very like soundscapey and dreamy. Um, and I knew about her, but I, at the time that she was looping, I wasn't interested. Um, I used to play with a woman named Doria Roberts, and she's a brilliant, brilliant singer, songwriter, guitarist. Most of her show was not looped, but she had a couple of songs where she looped. And I thought it was cool. You know, I didn't play on those songs. She just played by herself. But Ed Sheeran was the, was the introduction to looping that I guess most of us, if, if any of us know anything about looping, had. Um, and I thought what he did was cool. But even so, I, I wasn't really all that into Ed Sheeran. Um, I wanted to get a loop 
pedal, I think just because I wanted to experiment on the cello, I didn't really have any intention on becoming a looping artist. Um, and then one day, it was really on my 40th birthday, um, I wasn't feeling so good, in all honesty. I, you know, 40 was, the, the morning of my 40th birthday was not a particularly happy one. Um, but I sat down on my cello and I had been experimenting with the looper. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this song just poured out of me. And it was perhaps one of the most exciting things I think I'd ever created. Um, when I get excited about things, it sounds a little strange, I, I kind of get teary, so I started kind of bawling. I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Um, and then the looper is what allowed me to listen to it. Like I played that bass line and I looped it and I just listened back and I was like, oh my gosh. So I started playing over top of it and, and then all of a sudden a process was born. Um, about a week later I had a song and it was that song that communicated, that demonstrated for me that this was a way that I could express myself. Um, so the rest was just experimentation. And I would say that none of the people that I mentioned experimented with looping the way that, that I do. I mean, I think some things are similar, but um, you know, the only other person that does it who actually is just an instrumentalist is the cellist, Zoe Keating. And um, you know, if you like, if you know about Zoe Keating, you know about Zoe Keating, but most people don't. So it's been a fun time. It, it allows me to do all kinds of uh, cool things that people don't expect the cello to do. That's very exciting. And boys and girls, uh, Ms. Fig, Ms. Farrell, our computer teacher, she plays guitar and she has, since quarantine, uh, become a looper herself. She has played for some of us. So maybe someday we can get Ms. Farrell to perform for you guys on her guitar and demonstrate in person what you are watching O'Corey Johnson, OK Cello, performed for us via YouTube today. That'd be great. That'd be fun. It's always fun to see it happen live. All right. Ms. Donovan, do we have any um, other questions? I am looking at the chat right now. So I'm scrolling through. Give me one moment. I can also tell you that um, we have several of our ESL students, you know, students who are learning to speak English. Uh, while mm -hmm. they're in school with us are also posting lots of emojis of happy faces and instruments and um, are communicating in their own way how exciting it is to have you with us and to hear you play for us today. Oh, wow. Thank you all. I'm glad. Well, I, um, I look forward to a time when we more safely and comfortably can be in person with each other. Uh, because it, it became a bit of a, a rhythm for me coming to Louisville every year and I enjoyed it and I hope that I'll, I'll get a chance to come back and, and uh, certainly play for the Deeper Learning Conference. But um, as of yet, I actually haven't really played in the city outside of that. So uh, I think I'd like to develop a friendship with the city if I could and love to see you all in person. Same here, that would be phenomenal. And boys and girls or any of our teachers or family members that are watching, I encourage you to check out OK Cello on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'm sure you have videos on YouTube. I know there are things out there where we can see more mm -hmm. of your talent and performance displayed for us. So I know mm -hmm. we were speaking before we got started and Pretty, all of the teachers that are here in the, the meeting with us today, Ms. Overall, Mr. Demby, Ms. Donovan, myself, we all follow OK Cello on Twitter and Instagram. So check him out and you can hear more of what he has to offer and, and see what he is doing with his music. Um, I heard you say that you I also- say, If I could just, my, my website is also a good place to kind of see all of the stuff that I've collected together. So that would be www.okcello.com. Perfect. Um, and then, what was I? Shoot, I completely forgot what I was going to say. I'm so sorry. Mr. Demby, as our musician on staff, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Um, no, I really don't. I'm trying to, <laughs> you know, once you start in this managing 
chats and managing, and then people start texting. I, I'm, I'm not in the mindset to ask questions, but <laughs> I, I really do appreciate what you do. And since you're developing a relationship with the city of Louisville, I hope you will develop a special relationship with Jacob Elementary School. Just come on and that. as your school. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I love that. Thank you all very much. You come much. back I to Louisville, it. we're going to have to steal you over to Jacob for a few minutes. Uh, I may I like be that. able to facilitate that. Yeah, yeah. For sure she will be able to. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, all right. Um, on well, my end, Mr. On uh, my end, Mr. Demby, um, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but the chat's not working for me on my end. Um, are you all seeing any questions that I, we happen to maybe have overlooked? I have some coming in through text message, I guess, because the chat isn't working on you. Um, who, oh. in, who inspired you? And who, who, who are you inspired by? Like what artist wow. do you like to listen to? Mm hmm. Well, the artists that I listen to don't really play the kind of music that I play, um, but they are very, very strong influences. Uh, the, the most significant influence on me is Prince. Uh, I'm a big, big, big Prince fan. Um, if there's any other city other than Louisville that I'd love to also develop a relationship with, it's Minneapolis. I haven't, I played there once, but you know, I just, I think that would be exciting. Um, I'm a big fan of Bob Marley's. Um, I think Bob Marley's music is ambitious in the way that I would like my music to be. I mean, I think people listen to Bob Marley because they like it, but um, he said some really powerful things with his music. He was part of really uh, important movements. Um, and uh, he was able to do that and be popular and, and have people you know, appreciate what he did. So I like that a lot. Um, there's some other people that you may not know as well. Uh, you know, there's a there's a person named Jeff Buckley. Um, I really like his music. Unfortunately, he's passed. He's not with us anymore. Um, and uh, I like Nina Simone. I really, really, really like Nina Simone. These are all old people. I'm really making myself seem old right now. Um, who do I like that's out right now? Um, I I don't listen to him regularly, but when I hear him, I do like like what I hear. I do like Little Baby. Um, I think Little Baby is trying. Little Baby is trying to grow and evolve and to do some really interesting things. And he's from Atlanta. You know, a lot of the contemporary hip hop right now is out of Atlanta. Um, a really, uh, I, again, I don't listen to her all the time, but I'm I'm really impressed by and inspired by Beyonce. Um, I think Beyonce is. Is, is ambitious, you know? I think she is making good music, but she's also using her music to touch so many parts of our lives. Um, and uh, I really respect that. Um, I think she's changing the world. Every album, every video that she releases, I think it moves the world a little bit. And uh, I really, really respect that. Um, uh, let's see, who else do I like? Uh, you know, again, he's old and nobody's listening to him anymore. I apologize. But um, Bobby McFerrin has, to some degree, the kind of career that I like, that I would like to have. Um, he's the only person that does what he does. Um, he creates experiences for his audiences. He just doesn't play music. Uh, and he lives at the intersection of all these different experiences, classical music, um, jazz, um, blues, pop, and he does so really comfortably and organically. So I, I like that a lot. Um, who else is out there that I've been listening to? Uh, oh, my favorite hip hop artist though. My favorite, favorite hip hop artist right now. Well, I'll say my daughter's is Drake. I don't mind Drake. My daughter loves Drake. Um, but I love Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is, he's, he's the guy for me right now. He's the, he's, the, he's the top of the hip hop world right now. I don't think anybody is creating hip hop that is as interesting or as engaging to me as, as Kendrick Lamar. 
Okay, I had another question. Does your daughter play? I've got two. I have two. I tried Do to get both of them to play the cello. Uh, no, they didn't like play the cello. My oldest daughter was not interested in playing the cello, though she we tried. And my I tried to get my youngest daughter to play the violin, and she, yeah, she didn't really love that. But my youngest violin, my youngest daughter actually now is. Um, this doesn't sound like a favorable term, but it, it's usually meant as a favorable term when musicians say it. She's becoming a studio rat. So she has keyboards and two guitars and the ukulele, and she's trying to get a bass guitar, uh, and she has a recording uh, workstation on her computer. Um, and so she just makes music. She goes down in her room and she's practicing, and I love that. I really, really, really love that. So um, we'll see, you know, she's just in eighth grade now. So we'll see what happens over the next four years. But um, yeah, I'm excited about that. That is very exciting, I'm sure, as a musician. Um, I'm not a musician. My daughter attends a school here in JCPS and began learning Suzuki violin um, in first grade. Uh -huh. So she played violin up until last year and she decided to switch to the cello. Um, unfortunately ah. this year she's not been able to play because we haven't been in school. Yeah. So she's kind of mm -hmm. fallen off a little bit, but I'm hoping once we're back in, she can kind of get back into it because she was really enjoying it and okay. playing, learning to that. play Suzuki is very different. Um, so for those of you that don't know, just my basic understanding, uh, you learn to play by listening. It's all by ear. Yeah. So she has not learned to read music but they hear a song or they hear a tune and then they begin to learn how to replicate that based on the notes of their instrument. So it's been very interesting to see her go through that process. Yeah, Suzuki is great. And um, I didn't learn Suzuki, but uh, I have worked with students where I concentrate more so on learning to play by ear than by, than by reading. I, of course, it's important to be able to read, but learning to play by ear is a very uh, valuable talent. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have two more questions, and that'll be two more. Gotcha. Uh, do you sing as well? <laughs> Depends on how you define sing. <laughs> I, uh, I I can carry a tune, and I have an al I have a song on my second album where I do sing. Um, I don't perform that song frequently. I I um. I vocalize. Uh, as a matter of fact, I feel like I've been called out. Um, it seems like I should end this by playing some music. Uh, and if I, if I do play some music, I, I won't sing in the traditional sense. Like I'm not gonna hold a mic and sing lyrics, but there'll be some sound incorporated, some voice sound incorporated into my loop. So we'll see how that plays out. And then, um, yeah. Well, that'll be the that'll be the last song I play, but it doesn't have to happen right now. I can take another question. Um, I think you already answered this, but uh, one of our fifth graders in asked, um, who taught you to play, and then mm. two questions in one. Um, one of the teachers asked, "Is there any? Um, do you have any? Wait, is there any nature?" Um, anything in nature that influences your music and then mm. so those two questions together mm -hmm. then you can play us out mm -hmm. then I'll play yeah um, maybe things will change in the future um, as now that we have the we have YouTube and we have the internet um, but for the most part the cello, the violin, the viola, the bass, these are instruments and skill sets that are passed down from one player to another. Um, so it's very difficult, even sometimes just in a classroom, to get good on an instrument without that one-on-one -on -one kind of transference of skill and knowledge. There are people who do it, but more often than not, you have private teachers. So I had private teachers. Um, I got my first private teacher when I was seven. Uh, Robert Hofmeckler, he was, uh, he was an, a much older Russian that left Russia and came to the United States to live. And um, then I had a couple of other teachers that were not as significant. I didn't stay with them as long, but my other teacher was a, a gentleman named Oliver Edel. Um, and then I played with him for a long time. But I did something a little different for the cello 
Um, well, most people who play the cello professionally, they go to music school or they go to a conservatory. Um, and I didn't do that. As a matter of fact, when I graduated from high school, I didn't think I was gonna play the cello. I thought that I was gonna be a writer. Um, I majored in English, I went to Morehouse and majored in English, and I brought my cello because well, why not? But I didn't think that I was going to play. As a matter of fact, for much of my life, the cello was the other thing that I did, uh, which I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, but what I will say is that I didn't go to conservatory or school. And basically that just means, you know, how some people go to college to study medicine or they go to college to study law or they, they become a vet or something like that. Some people go to college to study their instrument. So they go to college to study violin or trumpet or oboe. Um, well, I didn't do that, but what I ended up doing was I ended up playing in bands, which is not typically what you do with cello. I played um, this is the one little name dropping thing, but um, one of my first early bands was with India RV. And so India and I were kind of both a duet. I mean, it was her show, so I was accompanying her. And then we had a, she had a larger band. So from 94 until really about almost 2000, maybe 99, 2000, I played in India's band. Um, and my music school, was playing music with people and no one could tell me how to do it. So when you go play with a, a, a like a rock band or a soul band or a jazz band, there are no other cellists, there are no other string players. They just say, hey, jump in and play this. Maybe they sing a part to you or maybe they throw a little music at you, but you, they just throw you in the deep end of the pool and tell you to swim. Um, so that is where I learned to do what I do. Um, that is where I learned to play by ear. That is where I learned about microphones and mixers and pickups and amplifying my sound. Um, that is where I learned about songwriting um, because I played with people who called themselves singer songwriters. Um, let's see, who are, who are singer songwriters today? I don't know if anyone listens to John Mayer. John Legend is a singer songwriter. John Legend sits at a piano. He doesn't have to have a band, he just sings, right? Well, for all of my adult career, from the time that I was 19 until 40, I played behind singer-songwriters who played piano or who played guitar. Um, and I listened to the way that they told stories. I listened to the way that they made songs. And when it was time for me to do that as a solo artist, um, I started patterning my art after their art, rather than you know Mozart or Beethoven. I was, you know, mimicking um, Dory Roberts or Callahan or uh, India Ari. So that's what I try to do with my music. Um, make pop, digestible, singer-songwriter tunes on the cello without any words. <laughs> that's influenced by jazz and, and that I loop. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of strange elements there. But yeah, so that's who taught me to play the cello. Some early cello teachers, but um, up until I was 17. And then the rest, I kind of figured out on my own. All right, so I guess someone dared me to sing. I mean, it was a nice dare. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a bold-faced dare, but someone said, hey, do you sing? Can you actually sing? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play a song called These Are The Days, um, and there's some singing in it, and um, I, you, will, you will see what my limitations are as a vocalist, but I'm gonna sing not so much so that I can impress you, but because I want you to sing with me at home. Um, and I'm gonna teach you what the words are. You don't have to unmute or anything like that, and I guess if you're watching on the YouTube side, you can't. But I want you to sing with me at home um, because I, I think the message is kind of inspiring. Um, so it's called, uh, These Are The Days, it's the name of the song, and the lyrics go, These Are The Days, These Are The Days We've Been Waiting For, These Are The Days We Are The Ones. All right, let me set my cello up and get ready for that, and then that'll be the end here.
it again. y'all want you all to try and join me at home and they go like this So that's my singing. I, uh, I don't think I'll have an, an album of uh, just my voice right now, but uh, that's, that's what I have for you. Listen, Jacob Elementary, right? Jacob Jaguars, is that right? I love the alliteration there. Yes, sir. Um, Jacob, you all have been a wonderful audience. I wish I could have seen more of you. Maybe if there's a video of this, I'll get a chance to go back and take a look at it on YouTube. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, it's been a joy and a pleasure to play for you. Thank you, Ms. Donovan, for reaching out. Uh, and thank you, um, Mr. Demby and Mr. Miss Overall. And your principal's name is Ms. Ms. Wagner. Wagner, Ms. Wagner. 
I thank all of you for making uh, this possible. And I really uh, do hope to get back to Louisville sometime soon. Thank One of our so students. Oh, hold on, Miss uh, Overall. I'm sorry. One of the students said, You're the best singer they have ever listened to. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very, <laughs> very much. I feel so flattered. And I'm also going to encourage them to listen to some other singers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much. Uh, Ms. Overall, you're going to say something? I just want to say thank you so much, Mr. Johnson. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. And I would love to bring you back and share you with our Jacob family as much and as often as you would enjoy, Mr. Johnson. All right. I'd like that. I'd like that. Thank you, Ms. Donovan. And I, I, I uh, appreciate your reaching out and staying in touch. It's been... Um, it's been cool knowing some people or having a couple of people that maybe I can kind of reach out to in, in Louisville. And I'm realizing like, as everyone else says uh, Louisville, that I've been saying it like a foreigner, like Louisville, <laughs> Louisville, right? Is <laughs> That's the way that it's pronounced, got it. All right, I learned quickly, I think, Louisville. Um, hopefully next time I get a chance to uh, say it correctly in your presence. But thank you all again. And thank you, Ms. Donovan for reaching out and inviting me. All right. Thank you, boys and girls, for coming on for the great um, Jaguar reading with Mr. O'Corey Johnson. Please look up his um, stuff on his website, OK Cello. Look on YouTube. You can find more of his awesome playing. Um, thank you again, Mr. Johnson, for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Um, and you guys have a wonderful day, boys and girls. Make sure you.